Discover the tips and strategies that will help you achieve your retirement goals. I'm your host, James Canole, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you retire well. It all starts right here on Ready for Retirement. Welcome back to another episode of Ready for Retirement. I'm your host, James Canole. Today's episode is all about IRA, so traditional IRA versus Roth IRA contributions, but not in the way it's typically framed, which is from a federal income tax standpoint. Today's episode is from the state income tax standpoint, which is the side of things that gets a lot less attention. This question or this episode comes from a listener question and the listener's name is Carmen and she says this. She says, hi, James. First, I want to say thank you for all the information you provide to help clarify slash plan for retirement. It has helped me immensely. You have a way of explaining things that makes it easy to understand this complicated and sometimes scary topic. I am 63 years old and I'm thinking of retiring at either age 65 or full retirement age, which for me is 66 and 10 months. I have a traditional IRA with a company match up to 4%. In 2020, I was given the option to save to a Roth IRA, and I did so. Originally, I was funding both accounts. However, last month, I changed to only fund the Roth and not the traditional. My question is this. I'm considering a move to a more retirement-friendly state like Florida, for example, which does not tax retirement accounts. Should I have bothered at this point to open a Roth? And most importantly, should I continue funding only the Roth or switch back to fund the traditional IRA instead? Best regards, Carmen. Well, Carmen, thank you very much for that question. I'm glad that you're asking it because, as I mentioned in the intro, the state income tax side of things is not really reflected on that much. It's not examined as much as the federal side is. And this is becoming more and more important because more and more people are retiring to another state. And when they're doing Roth analysis, whether it's should I do an IRA versus a Roth IRA with my new contributions Or even when they're doing a conversion analysis of does it make sense to convert funds from an IRA to a Roth IRA, they're almost always looking at just the federal impact of that, the federal tax impact of that. But as I mentioned, with more people moving interstate or to different states in retirement, this is something that needs to get more attention. So what it comes down to, the question at the end of the day, is how does our state of residence impact the decision to make traditional or Roth contributions, whether it's an IRA or a 401k. Now, Carmen in her question said IRA. I'm going to make the assumption it's actually a 401k because she says there's a an employer match here. So whether it's a 401k or an IRA, though, it won't really matter. They're the same in terms of the tax impact. $1 into a traditional IRA versus $1 to a traditional 401k has the same tax impact to you. In the same way that $1 to a Roth IRA or $1 to a Roth 401k, again, same thing. So thankfully, this is a relatively straightforward analysis. There's two main things that you need to consider. The first is the state you live in now versus the state you live in when you retire. Here's what I mean by that. If you live in Florida now and you're planning on living in Florida in retirement, then really your analysis is just going to focus on federal taxes. You're in a 0% state income tax bracket now versus being in a 0% state income tax bracket in retirement. And that just doesn't factor into the analysis. It's going to be the same in both scenarios. If you live in a state like California now, and you will also continue to live in California in retirement, then the analysis will primarily focus on federal taxes because that's going to be the major difference between tax brackets or tax rates for you now versus in retirement. But to an extent, you will still want to plan on tax brackets now versus in the future because it's the same progressive tax rate structure where you can still move up and down within the tax brackets now versus retirement. So that's the first thing that you want to note. If you're in the same state now as you will be in retirement, you may completely ignore state income tax brackets. If you're either in a situation where it's a no income tax state, or if you're in a situation where the income tax bracket you're in now in the state income tax bracket you'll be in the future is the exact same. If that's the case, just disregard state income taxes from your analysis because it's not going to matter whether you do IRA now and pull it out and pay taxes in the future, or you do Roth IRA now and forego the tax benefit today, but have it come out tax-free in the future, it's not going to change anything on the tax side. Where this really does make a substantial difference 
is when people are working today and they're maybe in their higher income earning years and they're living in a state with high income taxes, but they plan to retire to a state with lower or even no income taxes in retirement. So this is what I oftentimes will see. I'll see people who come to me and let's say they're living in California and they're focusing on doing their Roth IRAs or their Roth 401ks. And in many cases, there's still a very good reason to do this. But for this example, let's see why that might not make sense for everybody. So they're doing Roth today, and let's assume that they have high income today. They could be in the 22 to 32% or even higher tax bracket on the federal side. And then if they're in California, they might have income taxes, state income taxes of another 9, 10% or more. Then let's assume they're going to retire it to a state like Texas or a state like Florida, a state where there's no income taxes. Well, what we're looking at is in retirement, if we look at their income then, and not just their income, but their taxable income, let's assume Social Security makes up a good chunk of it. Well, Social Security is not fully taxed. And then they have some dividends and some capital gains and then some IRA distributions. When you add up all those income sources, they might only be in a 12% tax bracket in retirement. So also when they're moving to Florida and Texas, the state income taxes go away. So what they're in today is maybe paying between 22 and 32%. That's maybe their highest marginal bracket or just the top marginal bracket they're in today. And that's going to drop to 12%. And then their state income taxes are maybe 9 or 10% today. And that goes away completely in retirement. So what we're looking at is an all-in tax bracket today of 31% or higher versus a 12% total tax bracket, both state and federal combined in retirement. So in that case, I love that people are so into Roth IRAs and into Roth 401ks and wanting to do the smart thing from a tax standpoint. But in this case, the balance might be tipping pretty significantly in the other direction. Yes, Roths can be good, but if it's costing you 31 cents on the dollar or more to put money into Roth accounts, because we have to think of the opportunity cost, which is you could have saved 31 cents on the dollar or more by putting that into traditional accounts. Well, when they're pulling it out, They're pulling money out at just a 12% bracket. Even if they stayed in the same federal bracket, just moving out of state could save a bunch. Because in California, again, for example, the 9.3% tax bracket, it starts at right about or just above $122,000 of income from married, finally, jointly. So it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot to really quickly get into the higher income brackets for California. So in these instances, This is where sometimes it can make a whole lot more sense to prioritize the pre-tax contributions while you're working, while you're both in a higher federal tax bracket, plus in a state where you're paying income taxes, if your plan is to move to a lower or no income tax state in retirement. So that's the first thing that you want to look at. When you're running this analysis of pre-tax versus Roth, don't just look at the federal level, but also understand state taxes. And are you going to be making a move in retirement? Well, then that should absolutely be factored into the decision because too often we're just focused on federal income tax brackets and we neglect to include state income tax brackets as well. The second thing you need to consider, and really this ties into the first, is how will that state or how will your state tax IRA distributions? And this gets a lot more confusing in some ways than federal because at the federal level, there's just one set of brackets. There's the ordinary income tax rates to 10%, 12%. 22, 24 and beyond, it's fairly straightforward. You can just line up your distributions with your deductions and see what marginal tax bracket are you going to be in. Well, with states, every state's a little bit different. There are some states that don't have any income tax at all. There are some states that do have income taxes, but they don't tax IRA distributions or 401k distributions. And there's some states that do have income taxes, but they don't tax pensions either. So here's a quick rundown. There's nine states that don't have any income taxes at all. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. And it's a little bit misleading to say those have no income taxes at all. New Hampshire does tax dividends and interest income, but the rest of them, they don't have any state income taxes. So if you're listening to this and you are working and you're in a higher income tax bracket and you're in a state that does have state income taxes, but you're planning on moving to one of those nine states in retirement, that should absolutely be factored into your decision of whether you're doing 
pre-tax or Roth contributions because that state income tax, that's not an insignificant part of your overall tax bill, depending on what state you live in. Now, those nine states don't have any income taxes whatsoever, with the exception, of course, of New Hampshire, like I said, that does tax dividend and interest income. There are other states that do have income taxes, but they don't tax distributions from 401ks, IRAs, or pensions. Those states are Illinois, Mississippi, and Pennsylvania. Meaning if you're there and you're earning a paycheck, you're going to pay taxes on that paycheck, state taxes. But when you're in retirement, if you're pulling money out of your 401k or out of your IRA or you're collecting a pension, those three states will not tax those distributions, which is a great benefit. And then finally, there are two states that don't tax pensions, but they do tax distributions from 401k plans and IRAs, and they do have state income taxes, and that is Alabama and Hawaii. So if you live in Alabama or Hawaii and you have a pension, that pension will not be taxed, but anything you pull out of your 401k plan and your IRA will be subject to state income taxes, as will any other income sources that you have. Now, sometimes people hear this and they say, oh my gosh, so if there's a state, let's say Illinois, that doesn't tax IRA distributions, does that also apply to Roth conversions? And the answer is yes. If you're in Illinois, you can convert as much money from your IRA to your Roth IRA as you want, and you're not going to pay taxes on that distribution, on that conversion. So people hear this and they say, well, wait a minute, does it not make sense to move to Illinois or Mississippi or Pennsylvania and start doing massive Roth conversions because that's not going to be taxed? Well, that's correct. It's not going to be taxed at the state level, but keep in mind, it's still going to be taxed at the federal level, which is almost always going to be the higher of the two taxes that you're paying. So this is a huge benefit, but it's at the state level. Keep in mind, you're coordinating both what you're doing and what the federal tax impact of that is, as well as what's the state income impact of that. So going back to the original question from Carmen, Carmen asked, should I even bother at this point to open a Roth IRA? And most importantly, should I continue funding only the Roth or switch back to fund the traditional instead because she's planning to move to a lower income tax state in Florida? It still depends, Carmen. I don't know your exact income situation and your whole financial picture. What I will say, though, is the fact that you're planning to move to a state like Florida and I'm going to make the assumption that you're in a state today where you are paying state income taxes, it's going to tip the scales further in the balance of doing pre-tax contributions today because not only are you getting the federal benefit, but you're also getting a tax benefit, which will be irrelevant when you pull those funds out in retirement because you're not going to be paying any income taxes on those contributions if you're in a state like Florida. So the bottom line of all of this is the answer of pre-tax versus Roth is still going to be it depends because there's still a whole bunch of different factors. And not only are there federal taxes and state taxes, but this ties into your social security taxes and it ties into IRMA decisions. And there's a whole bunch of things that factor into this. But what I will say is if you're moving states, then the answer could become a whole lot clearer depending upon what the tax brackets are where you live today versus the state you'll be retiring to. And if you're going from a high income tax state today to a low or no income tax state in retirement, that really will push the balance towards doing pre-tax contributions a lot more often than otherwise would be the case. So that is it for today's episode. Be sure to check us out on YouTube under Root Financial Partners. If you haven't already done that, there's a lot more content, all with the goal of helping you to create a secure retirement. Be sure to leave a review, please, if you're enjoying this episode or enjoying this podcast. And if there's anyone you can think of that would benefit from this episode or from the podcast as a whole, I'd really appreciate if you share some episodes or share the podcast with them. So that is it. Thank you very much as always for listening and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Ready for Retirement podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe and let me know by leaving a five-star review. And as always, for a list of the notes and the resources mentioned in today's episode, you can find those at the Ready for Retirement website, which is readyforretirement.co. That's readyforretirement.co. And if you have a question that you would like for me to answer in a future episode, then you can also go to the Ready for Retirement website, readyforretirement.co. There's a page called Submit Your Question where you can submit a question for me to answer in a future episode. Thanks as always for listening, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, it's me again for the disclaimer. Please be smart about this. Before doing anything, please be sure to consult with your tax planner or financial planner. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment, tax, legal, or other financial advice. It is for informational purposes.